Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the OK Grognard Show. It is Monday, November 23rd, 10 a.m. Central, in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Well, it's Monday, and that means it's Weekly News and Announcements Day. Right? Right? I contacted the winner winner. I've contacted the giveaway recipient and they have accepted. It is our friend Lexfire22, George, from Northern Illinois. I don't know. I'm trying to t- I'm trying to convince him it's okay for me to send these. I mean, it's not that expensive to mail a, a few dice. I, you know, I said, yeah, if you want to wait until after the pandemic's over and we'll get together and you can pick them up or I can bring them down to you. Or I can just mail them. I wanted to leave options for him. And I don't, I don't know. Uh, George, I, if you're listening, I hope you don't think that I meant that mailing was any kind of hardship for me because it is the easiest thing in the world. So... If you want them, if you want them right away, I guess maybe that's the thing you're thinking. Maybe you're just thinking, well, when am I going to use them? But, you know, just kind of having them, sort of a thing. The skull dice, a pair of skull dice, they're not expensive dice. The uh, Lake Geneva Games D6s, I bought a bunch of those for myself. Before the store closed, and uh, I've been kind of uh, whittling through them, passing one along here and one along there to various people, a pair here, a pair there sometimes. So, there's more, there's, there's either, I think there's more at the store, I think there still are, I think we got some. Dice and T-shirts at Lake Geneva Games, anticipating, you know, some uh, some walk through traffic from GaryCon in late March last year, and we closed. Well, GaryCon went virtual, and the store closed just before GaryCon would have started. Anyway, we were already um, in early March working under the presumption that only so many people could be in the store at any given time and you had to uh had to go around and you know clean everything right after somebody walked through if they touched anything at all right before we closed we were being pretty careful with people coming in and uh more or less staying toward the front of the store the the game room been closed for a couple few weeks uh, it had at first been limited to, uh, you know, like half a dozen people in each room. I think there, there's two rooms, and I think we did a half a dozen people in each room because that was like the the uh, prevailing wisdom at the time. I mean, we still don't know everything about this friggin' virus, but uh, we know we, we knew even less then. Let's put it that way. And you can never know what you don't know. But uh, I picked up these skull dice. I just got them on Amazon. They're not expensive dice, like I said. I I got uh, two packs of five. They'd be good for, you know, you can get them in a five pack. You can play Ship Captain Crew with them or other games that require five dice. Um, Liar's Dice is... Right? Just everybody starts with five. Anyway, the uh, the point being, I think I've got uh, two or three more sets. Pair of Skull Dice plus, plus an LGG. One LGG D6. There we go. So that's pretty cool. And the the cool thing, of course, is that they're from Lake Geneva. They were blessed on the on the altar, 
blessed on the stone. Shane. Shane won last week. John Gilbert won the week before. One, two, three. I've got two more sets. So I've got one set for for this week, which will give away next Monday. And one set for next week, which will give away on the 7th of December. And then we're going to have to figure something out. Because here's the thing. December... Giveaway on the 7th. I'm going to have two more weeks of potential giveaways. I am going to take a vacation from the show at the end of the year. My last show of the year will be on the 21st. That'll be a week after the anniversary of Creative Mountain Games which ostensibly we've kind of put on the 15th of December. I think a couple years into the run, that's when I picked up the domain, creativemountaingames.com, and I think that's the date that I picked it up on, so I kind of made that the second year anniversary when I grabbed it. Was it second? I forget. It's been 20 years now. Since I started working on Creative Mountain Games stuff. It's actually been longer since I was Creative Mountain Games. Only because I tooled around in the late 90s with the idea of putting some stuff out. And was working on some stuff. But I didn't really publish anything. Until the OGL hit. And uh, at that point I I had uh, gotten a DBA. Or doing business as when I was down in Illinois. Up here, you just have to do <laughs> to get it sanctioned. Anyway, the 21st, that's a Monday. That'll be the last show of the year. And then I'm going to take two weeks. And I'm going to come back on the 4th of January to start the new year. I want to start on Mondays. And here's the thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do... Two shows a week instead of seven. I'm changing the format of the show. I'll do slightly longer shows. And in some cases, much longer shows. I think I have settled on... I think... I'm just going to announce, right? Um, Two shows a week. One's going to be... Outside the game, and one's going to be inside the game. So Monday is going to be news and announcements. It's going to be GM reviews. It's going to be the logistics of putting games together. And the logistics, the uh, mechanics of using virtual tabletops. I'll feature different things like that. It'll be out of the game. Thursday will be in the game. Sometimes that'll be an actual game. I think that'll work out that on Thursdays of various conventions that start on Thursday, I'll try to set it up so I'm running a game on Thursdays that that can be shared on Twitch and uh, people that play in it will have to agree to that, obviously. So it'll have to be, you know, can't just be regular signups. But I think I've got enough people that are part of the crowd here on on again, off again. Obviously, people are not here every single day. It's seven days a week. You'd have to be crazy to be here seven... Oh, wait, I'm here seven days a week. Um, (laughs) I think... uh, Like I say, the shows will probably be closer to an hour. Maybe just a half hour. I don't know. I I, I haven't decided on the length of shows yet. That's going to be... That's going to be kind of the tricky part. Because it's going to depend on how much I want to say that given day. I mean, it's kind of easy, I think, to do these half-hour shows. I do seven days a week because 
because the idea of the format is that there, there's a loose over thing, uh, topic, uh, category each of the seven days. And then I just plug in something into that category, usually based on something I thought of that morning or the day before. Sometimes it's a continuation of something I did the previous week uh, or several weeks in some cases. Um, but ultimately, it's a, you know, do what, you, do what you feel like doing. And when you feel like doing something, it's pretty easy to expound on it, expand it to um, knead it like dough and examine it from various angles and a half hour of that is not that difficult to do i mean and with the show opening and the show closing stuff um and a little bit of just general hellos and sometimes some chatting with the people in the stream uh sometimes i'm really only examining a subject for 20 or 25 minutes which you know it's it's not that difficult to talk about something for that long when it's in an area of something that you love, right? Gaming, just in general. Um, so the, so that's what uh, most Thursday shows will be. Uh, the world building, the campaign running, the building adventures, the GM tips will all be sprinkled throughout. Um, I discovered... Since setting these categories, I think in August, you know, I toyed around with several of them and then I kind of cemented them in August and have done another hundred shows since then, hundred plus shows since then. Uh, I think I figured out that there's so much overlap in some of these that I find myself sometimes saying, on a non-GMing tip day, giving a GMing tip fits with campaign stuff or fits with world building or in building adventures. And then it's like, uh, how much of this, uh, you know, how much of this do I have for the other days? How often am I going to be citing something that could just as easily fit in another category before I start thinking of all of that stuff in one in one mix. So that's the idea. Um, rules retrospective. I haven't decided. That's probably going to be Thursday stuff. I'm going to need to expand Monday stuff. Or just do a short show on Mondays. And do longer shows on Thursdays. Um, I can talk about a lot of different things. And you know what else on Monday. I can talk about what other companies are doing more. Because there's a lot of neat stuff out there that I run across all the time. And while I may repost stuff that uh, Tom Tullis is doing with Fat Dragon. Or uh, that Keith is doing with Fat Goblin. Or that Carlos is doing with Castle Entertainment. Carlos and Amanda. Or that Heath is doing down in uh, Adelaide with the... Antipode and D20. You know? So there's a there's a lot of other stuff going on that I could be discussing you know, every week, every other week. They're, they're doing something. They ain't just sitting on their hands. Especially not now. They've got more time to do stuff now. So I'm going to focus on those things more. And also on the, uh, and those are generally speaking, people that are Patreon supporters of me and the show. Um, so obviously I'll focus on them a lot more because I'm closer to them and I know them and I know what they're doing and I'm, I stay informed about those. But there'll be others, other stuff that I'm interested in that I'll bring up. And then, of course, the... the uh, the three artists that, that I follow and uh, support, and it's mostly, you know, to do with map stuff, right, Chris? From Crooked Staff Publishing, Crooked Staff Terrain now. 
and uh, Dyson Logos and his maps and uh, <laughs> and of course uh, the Forge Studios and all the uh, on the, all the wonderful work that they do too that he does but uh, even though I you know, my my Patreon support of them doesn't end with, you know, what uh, what they get each month from me. Because uh, I'm pretty vocal online about liking their stuff and when they come out with new stuff, sharing information about it. And that's going to continue. Now it'll just uh, filter into the show. Veruca Salt. I posted an interview with uh, Henry Rollins um, talking to the women, the front members of the band Veruca Salt, who in 93 had a big hit, Seether, had a couple, few albums, had a couple albums back then, and then uh, got back together and put another album out more recently. Uh, nice bunch. I had worked with their bass player, a fellow named Steve, doing low-level, low-voltage electrical work. You know, phone plugs, computer networking, outlets at desks in offices and such in the early 90s. So this is like, you know, pretty primitive primitive stuff but me and uh, me and Steve worked for another guy Tim who uh, had a small business uh, running these networks for companies as they moved into the uh, into the 90s you know most computers most most businesses offices were beginning to all have a computer at almost every desk at the very least for data processing or just accumulation of uh, certainly like circulation departments of magazines and newspapers were starting to just regular regularly key in all this stuff that had been piled up in hard copies for years and they wanted this information digitized so that was definitely a thing anyway Veruca Salt of course they named their band after one of the characters from from uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> I want it now. I want an everlasting gobstopper. And I want it now. Wonderful. Willy Wonka. I don't know. Do we need to uh, do much more here? I think we talked about the plans for 2021. We talked about this year. We talked about the fact that there's a few more weeks to go here before we uh, take the uh, year-end vacation. So let's see, the 30th, the 7th, the 14th, the 21st. One, two, three, four more weeks. Then we're going to take two weeks off at the end of the year. We'll come back on the 4th with somewhat longer shows, but just two shows a week in the new year on the 4th and the 7th of that first full week, Monday and Thursday. I also want to do this, too, because I feel like, uh, you know, I do board gaming on Tuesdays and Fridays, and I... Sometimes I feel a little rushed on a subject that I'd like to spend more time on that day when I'm in the moment. And uh, it's just, uh, but I have a commitment to jump into some gaming. And I, I want to go play those virtual board games when I get a chance. Just like if it wasn't COVID times, I'd be hitting... Taco Bell on Tuesday and Culver's on Friday and playing some board games with the gang. 
And man, I want to get back to that. One of these days. But, uh, you know, just can't do it right now. But in a few months from now, three months, four months, five months, six months, when it becomes possible again, and I'm not sure how long that'll be, seven months, eight months, July of 2021, will it be 2022 before the world is safe enough? To get together and play games and not have this specter looming over your shoulders as you do so. I hope it isn't that long. We got two vaccines in the works now. Pfizer and Moderna. Is that the other one? The other company that's working on one. So we'll see. We'll see. It's all going to boil down to how fast. Now that they've got something that works. It's all going to boil down to. How fast can they ramp up production on this? That is ultimately the question. How quickly can they create a distribution chain to make sure absolutely everybody, eventually everybody, gets uh, the vaccine? Now... There are going to be those when uh, the rubber hits the road again. I haven't heard much from anti-vaxxers over the last six, eight months. Something about uh, a disease that you can kill you and everybody searching for and trying to create a vaccine that will inoculate people. Something about the impending death thing makes... Uh, make some people who were anti-vaxxers before think twice about continuing with that sort of nonsense. So hopefully we will see a vaccine within the next half a year to a year, get widespread distribution such that you won't have to worry about it. We can start getting back to the game tables and playing again. I don't know if I talked much about it, but... Gary Khan has opted this March to go virtual again. Um, I do intend to run games. It's probably the next virtual convention for which I will be running games. I think there's a few in January, February. Winter this or that and the Midwest uh, gaming convention. And they have options for running games, virtual games. Maybe I'll throw down one or two in, in those two. I don't know. But at the very least, Gary Khan will be a definite virtual convention for me. And I'll be ready to go. Like I say, with the Thursday game. And you know what? I'll do other ones, too, that I will do as part of the show. So while I say it'll be Monday, Thursdays, I'm open to the idea that I can do... Those will be the regularly scheduled shows. But I'm open to the idea that uh, more things can be done beyond that. So, we'll see. I think they're mowing the lawn out there, so I'm going to wind her down over here. What are we at? 24 minutes? Yeah, we can do a shorter one today. Was there something else? Trying to think. Checking the stream chat. Pretty quiet over there. No questions. Got the dice. Got Gary Khan. Talked about the vacation. Reformatting for the show. You really should write stuff down, right? That would be, like, smart. I'm not smart. I never claim to be... Yeah, I claim it. I claim to be smart. Pretty often. Not really. Often enough that I know that I do. But, uh, yeah, that's it. So I'll be back tomorrow, right? Tomorrow is uh, World Building Day. We'll jump right into it. Um, Question, Thursday. Oh, yeah. Thursday. Am I doing a show on Thanksgiving? I think I am. I think think, uh, in COVID times... 
every day is to some extent like every other day. I don't necessarily... Now, Thursday's GMing Tips Day. And uh, I don't know how that really ties in with Thanksgiving. Um, we kind of been screwing around with the GMing uh, GM's Day stuff. We can talk more about GM's Day. It's going to be the 18th anniversary, I think. 2003. 17th anniversary. No, 2021 will be the 18th anniversary of GM's Day. So we'll talk more about that on Thursday for Thanksgiving because, after all, thank you DMs, GMs, referees, crypt keepers, game aficionados. I like the idea of calling someone a playmaster rather than a game master. I don't know. That's kind of a... What if we just called, since we require all sorts of knowledge, what if uh, the person who runs the game is called the PM? But we'll have it stand for polymath. Right? Polymath's kind of like a... A renaissance guy. A person who knows about a lot of different things. A person of wide-ranging knowledge or learning. A renaissance polymath. From the Greek. Palumathis. Palu. Much. Mathenine. Mathenian. Learn. Much learn. Learned much. Having learned much. Polymath. Early 17th century. It entered the Romance languages. No. It comes from the Greek. I guess it gets adopted from the Greek into just whatever language wants to pick it up, including English. So, PM, polymath. That's who runs games, right? Someone with wide-ranging knowledge. You kind of kind of got to know a lot about a lot of different things. Or at least a little about a lot of things and a lot about a few things. To run games, you got to know the rules. You got to know details about things if you're going to be able to improv into uh, situations. What about a length of rope? How much does marble weigh? Somebody asked me about a marble slab and I kind of just sort of reasoned out what I thought it would probably weigh having done some c construction back in the day, back when my body could take it and I figured it out and I just kind of figured a formula in my head about the uh, the density of this uh, slab and I came up with 600 and something 625 pounds or something I don't I don't know exactly how I got there but checked out the uh, mass figured it out online later and it was like 637 pounds would have been a more accurate answer but I was close enough that it actually made a difference in the game, which was good. Anywho, I've <laughs> been bullshitting long enough, huh? All right, that is true. We will say that this show is in the can. Show number 256, and we got 28 more shows on the year. That'll take us to 70, 84, 284, 285 shows. We won't make 300. Ah, it's arbitrarily a number that's a good one to hit, right? But I don't think so. Blessed Dice and Togs in 2021. We've made all the announcements. Join us again tomorrow. Cartography and World Building Day is Tuesday. Campaign discussion on Wednesday. GMing tips on Thursday, building adventures on Friday, GM reviews on Saturday, rules retrospective on Sunday, and back around the horn to next Monday for weekly news and announcements. 
If you're catching up with us on YouTube, please do subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up for any videos you watch if you enjoy them. And please do feel free to leave comments with constructive criticism or a pat on the back if you liked what we're doing. Thank you so much in the stream, on Twitch, on YouTube. This is the OK Grognard Show from beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Bye-bye. Uh,